So we believe in a doctrine called dispensationalism. What is dispensationalism? Dispensationalism simply means we rightly divide verses to the right group of people and the right time period. Because if you don't do that and you combine all the verses together, thinking they all apply to you, you're going to come up with a mess of wrong doctrine and confusion. So you can find the right doctrine when you properly divide things to the right people and the right time period. And then if you combine those two together, then you think they're all talking about the same person and it's like, this does not make sense, so it's better to divide it separately. So one of the salient doctrines in dispensationalism is the pre-tribulation rapture. Now there are people out there who believe that the church will go through the tribulation. They think this equals this. No, that is not true. So these are people who deny in a rapture. This does not equal this. This is how it should be. That's dispensationalism. So the church age time period is different from the tribulation time period. The church will be raptured before the tribulation starts. And the good guys in the tribulation are tribulation saints, not church age saints. Just like there's a difference with the Old Testament as well. See that? So there are distinctions right here. Don't put this into the same category. But Matthew 13 seems to disprove the notion about there's no rapture. Look at verse 24. Another parable put he forth unto them, saying, The kingdom of heaven is likened unto a man which soweth, sowed good seed in his field. But while men slept, his enemy came, and so tares among the wheat, and went his way. Okay, so remember, there's tares and wheats. So we recognize here that this is talking about the church, where there are tares among the wheat within the church. So we recognize that. So look at how it's worded right here. Verse 27, So the servants of the householder came and said unto him, Sir, didst not thou sow good seed in thy field? From whence then hath it tares? He said unto them, An enemy hath done this. The servant said unto him, Wilt thou then that we go and gather them up? But he said, Nay, lest while ye gather up the tares, ye root up also the wheat with them. So we see right here that when God is sowing seeds, fruit comes out, right? So there is good fruit that is sown. However, the problem is this, is that the enemy came by in that parable and there were tares as well. Which means right here that you can't distinguish in God's seed that he planted who's, a real good, who's the genuine person and who's not the genuine person. Who's the saved person? Who's not the saved person? Who's the true child of God and a fake child of God? That is so true in churches today. You see this, the seed sown throughout churches today, and all you see is tares and wheats sitting in the same spot together. If you don't believe me, go to those big churches. See how many of them get the gospel of salvation right. And then you'll find tares among the wheat. So what happens right here? Verse 30, let both grow together until the harvest. And in the time of harvest, I will say to the reapers, gather ye together first, not the wheat, the tares, and bind them in bundles to burn them, but gather the wheat into my barn. So if the wheat right here is the saints, God's children, and the tares right here are referring to the lost people, then notice that this does not make sense where God raptures the saints away from the tribulation where there are lost people. No, it seems like the sinners go to hellfire first. So it seems like that the lost sinners go to hellfire first and then the saints, they start to reign with God up in heaven forever. That's why they think this, see, if you get rid of this line right here, the church goes through the tribulation and there are wheats and tares, saints and lost sinners. And then at the final judgment, final resurrection, or whatever they want to believe in, 
is that the lost sinners go to hell and then the saved people, they can be with God up in heaven reigning forever. That's where they get this idea in teaching. It says at the time of harvest as well, right? That's when God does this. So the time of harvest, you're going to find out, is the end of the world. Look at verse uh, 39. Notice right here, the harvest is the end of the world. So see, it seems like that the wheat and tares, they go through the tribulation together. So how do you debunk this passage right here? It's pretty simple. Uh, you always say that, Pastor. Well, because Scripture can show you, even though it seems convincing to a cultist mind. So let's cover the scriptural portions right here. Just read the verse as it says. Oh, Pastor, you said that a million times, and if you read it, it doesn't seem to show it. No, you're not reading as it says. Look at verse 30. Gather ye together first. That's right, first the tares. Yeah. And what? Bind them in bundles to burn them. It didn't say to burn them first. Bind them in bundles to burn them. There's a gathering right here. So notice that these tares, God is gathering them. He's binding them in bundles. Why? To eventually burn them. He's not saying, okay, gather them and then poof, like that. No, he's gathering them, preparing them first so that once he binds them in bundles and gathers them up, then he's eventually preparing to cast them into the fire. I don't believe that. Scripture with scriptures. Look at Zephaniah. Look at Zephaniah. Scripture with scripture, friend. People don't look at the scriptures. Notice that Zephaniah chapter 3, we're going to look at chapter 3 first. Chapter 3, this binding and gathering, you know what this is? That's why this has to, that's why it's going on right now. Welcome United Nations. That's why this has to happen. You know why God is gathering, uh, gathering all these nations together? That way... When the tribulation happens, the Antichrist can have that one world government together. And that's why they're eventually going to be cast into hell at the end. See, that's what's going on right now. That's why the ecumenical movement have to, has to happen in churches. Why? So that they can, can become one world religion together under the Antichrist system. See that? Under a holy mother church. See that? Okay, let's look at Zephaniah chapter 3, verse 8. Therefore wait ye upon me, saith the Lord, until the day that I rise up to the prey. For my determination is to what? Gather the nations that I may what? Assemble the kingdoms to what? Pour upon them my indignation, even all my fierce anger, for all the earth shall be devoured with the fire of my jealousy. See, this is a future reference of burning. He wants to burn them. That's why he's gathering them. But look at Zephaniah 2. This is even more powerful. Look at Zephaniah 2. Notice that this gathering has to be before his anger of burning, his wrath of burning. So you call this wrath, right? Oh, give me one verse in the Bible where it says before, 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 before the tribulation time period, etc., etc. Well, here's your before right here. Kind of sick and tired of hearing that. Zephaniah 2.1. Gather yourselves together. Yea, gather together, O nation not desired. Right? Zep the same book, right? Zephaniah. That's that gathering. There's no doubt. Before the decree bring forth. Before the day passes the chaff. Before the, look at this, fierce anger of the Lord come upon you. Before what? The day of the Lord's anger come upon you. Look at that. There's your answer. You want something more powerful? Notice at verse 2, this, they are likened to not just the tares, but the what? Chaff, right? All right, look at Matthew 3. Look at Matthew 3. And look at the sequence right here. Look at the sequence. Matthew 3. Notice throughout your Bible, you're going to see a sequence of saved Christians or God's saints gathered first before 
the unbelievers are cast into the fire and burn. That's, you're going to see that sequence. So this sequence matches up. The saved believers gather together first before the lost people are burned. See, this sequence is working. It's not we go through together and the lost people go over here first, wrath, and then say, believers, we all live happily ever after. No, that's not how it works. Matthew 3, 8. Uh, Matthew 3, excuse me, verse 11. I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance. But he that cometh after me is mightier than I, whose shoes I am not worthy to bear. He shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost, and with fire. So it is true. Verse 11, John's baptism was done with water. He said one day there will come a person who will baptize you with the Holy Ghost. That's us Christians, right? Us Christians were baptized with the Holy Ghost, but then you're also baptized with fire. What is this? This is the wheat Christians versus the tares or the chaff right here burning. Because look at this, verse 12, whose fan is in his hand and he will truly purge his floor. Yeah, there's a purging. He has to find out the wheats and the tares. And gather his wheat into the garner. Look, that they're first gathered up. But he will burn up the chaff with unquenchable fire. See, after that. See, this supports it. The gathering of Christians first, and then they're burning. But let's look at Revelation 14. We will read verse 14. Revelation 14, verse 14. Now remember, the harvest is the end of the world, right? So notice that the wheat and the tares, they're going through the end of the world. And then what happens is that the tares get burned and then the wheat, they're gathered. So notice right here, we insist that the gathering is before the end of the world. The gathering is before the tribulation. So doesn't, isn't this a problem? No, you got to understand this. The wheat are who? Saints. There are church age saints and there are tribulation saints. The point is, is that the good guys are going to be gathered and they have their own gathering and the bad guys here, they have their own gathering right here. And guess what? This still works, by the way. <laughs> it's before this. This still works, by the way. Wait a minute. You're drawing two raptures. That's dispensationalism. There are two raptures. We believe in a, rap, a post-tribulation rapture, a rapture for tribulation saints, and a rapture before the tribulation, pre-tribulation rapture. Oh, you're just stretching things. Okay, let's go one at a time, and then I'll disprove you, okay? Revelation 14, verse 14. And I looked, and behold, a white cloud, and upon the cloud one sat like unto the Son of Man, having on his head a golden crown, and in his hand a what? Sharp sickle. Remember the Bible's talked about, you know, reaping at Matthew 13, verse 15. And another angel came out of the temple crying with a loud voice to him that sat on the cloud, thrust in thy sickle and reap, for the time is come for thee to reap, for the harvest of the earth is ripe. That's right. We believe in that. He's reaping. He's gathering. But look who's first. And he that sat on the cloud thrust in his sickle on the earth and the earth was reaped. See, the saved people of the harvest are gathered first. And then the lost people are after, because look at verse 17. And another angel came out of the temple, which is in heaven, he also having a sharp sickle. And another angel came from the altar, which had power over fire, and cried with a loud uh, cry to him that had the sharp sickle, saying, Thrust in thy sharp sickle, and gather the clusters of the vine of the earth, for her grapes are fully ripe, and the angel thrust in his sickle into the earth and gathered the vine of the earth and cast it into the great winepress of the wrath of God. Remember, this is talking about the wrath. And he is gathering these lost sinners undoubtedly for his wrath. But who's first? These guys are gathered first before these guys are cast into his wrath. So yes, they, there are saints that go through the time of the end, but what happens? They go up first, they're raptured first, before the lost sinners are cast into the fire. Doesn't change that fact. And by the way, let's look at 1 Corinthians 15. This is undoubtable proof of pre-tribulation rapture. You ready for this? This will be very, very bad for the 
for our opponents. Here is the nail on the coffin, all right? This is the big problem right here. The harvest is called what? End, right? But look at the church age Christians right here. Look at our rapture. 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Now, I'm not going to cover this for time's sake, but we know this whole chapter is talking about the resurrection, which is, con uh, which is assimilated with the rapture here, right? At verses 50 all the way through 55. That's the famous rapture passage. I'm not going to read that passage. A lot of people should know that. 1 Corinthians 15, verse 50 through 55. That's the famous rapture passage. In context of this rapture passage, look at this. Look at verse 21. Uh, look at verse 22. For as in Adam all die, even so in Christ shall all be made alive. So there's going to be a resurrection. We're going to be made alive. And that's what our rapture is, that we're going to be resurrected and caught up in the air with God. Now look at this. Verse 23, but every man in his what? Own order. There's an order here of the resurrections and the raptures that accompany this. You ready for this? Christ the first fruits. Afterward, they that are Christ at his coming. That's us. We belong to Jesus Christ. Then cometh the what? And oh, we have to go up before the end right here. Oh, they just made it worth with Matthew 13. It's the end. In the end, we have to go through the end. You made it worse. We have to go up before the end now. You just made it. You just proved pre-tribulation rapture even more by emphasizing that at Matthew 13. We're going through the end. We're going through the end together. This says we're going up before the end. But it says every man, see verse 23, these are all saints. These are all good guys here. They have their own order here. There's an order and sequence. The ones before the end, I told you so. And the ones at the end, I told you so. Amen. So this just proved dispensational raptures. You just strengthened dispensationalism even more. Thank you.